And like you said, he's got three rings, right? And just to clarify, none of those rings are with Connor, right? Was Frazier Minton going to have more points than Sapkowski this year? Frazier Minton sucks at hockey. This guy might not even be an NHLer. So we got to settle down on that one. I laid no. Minus 160 on will they show her holding a drink in her hand. They are two points behind the St. Louis Blues in the wild card. And they are oh, the Blues are dog water. The Blues suck. And the Blues point. are the worst of those four teams <laughs> that I mentioned by a mile. And that's they're, my they're not a good hockey team. Care, like have some set of balls, have some response, have some pride for what the hell goes on on the ice. It's so absurd. I'm looking forward to the parade, um, but that's going to be later in the year. I'd rather have so money in there than have Arvid Soderbaum. I would rather stack a bunch of garbage that I have in the corner of my room over here than have Arvid Soderbaum in that. He's April 15th, welcome back to Edgework presented by Stacks. I'm Zach Phillips, joined here today by Alex B. Smith, as well as So Money Sports to help break down tonight's NHL games. We do have eight on the schedule here, a couple that we've got best bets in. We'll take a look at those. We'll give our uh, give our bets out. We'll try to answer some questions from the chat here as well, if people have any or any games that they're looking at here tonight, but maybe looking for some guidance on. We'll try to get through all of those, but before we get into any of that, I want to remind people that if you haven't already, you should be signed up at Stacks Betting Exchange. If you're sick of getting limited and profiled, Stacks a unique sport spending exchange that offers higher limits and better pricing. Stacks offers a fair and real-time marketplace for users to bet on the outcome of sporting events, offering better odds in a peer-to-peer marketplace. Stacks is the best option for anyone who wants to wager on live sports. Make sure to add Stacks to your list of outs and sign up today. The option is yours at Stacks. Make sure to sign up there. You can also join the conversation by clicking the link in the description. It's take you over to the discord there you can find other betters who are looking for uh, maybe opposing sides of you and come to a conclusion find price that works for both of you so make sure to check that out now guys look we got to be realistic about what's going on on the season here two and two on saturday we're still we go up money a little bit there but as for what's going on this year so far 337 370 and 17 we're up 0.35 0.35 units here now uh just over you know almost a zero percent roi here so far on the season so effectively break even for us this year it's gone down gone downhill kind of here since the all-star break but um you know what we got plenty of playoff bats ahead of us things obviously tighten up but we're gonna find some opportunities here moving forward and maybe that'll start here tonight where we will take a look uh so far here in the tampa bay buffalo game Tampa Bay hosting the Sabres, minus 156. We see on the Lightning, best price at stacks. The Sabres, plus 145. We see some totals of six and a half, sixes out there right now. Alex B., what are your thoughts on this game here tonight, and do you have any bets? Yeah, just one thing that I'm looking at, and I've been riding this pretty hard in, in the last uh, couple of weeks. It's been the first period overtrend with Tampa, 21-5 and five the last 26 games. And uh, if you look, you can see that the prices were getting great prices, anything $1.30 or less. Definitely worth playing on here. Buffalo well out of the race. Tampa kind of in cruise control. They can't really move up anywhere from where they are in the, the, the first wild card spot. But I still think there's going to be goals at least early in this contest. So at that cheaper of a price, $1.22 at Pinnacle, definitely looking at that first period over for the night. All right, so we'll grab that first period over uh, one and a half minus one twenty two. That'll be the first bet we lock in. Again, if you do want to see all the picks that we're giving out here on the show, you want to track us through the season this year. You want to track whatever it is day by day or the style of bets that we're doing. You can find that in the Bet Stamp app in the Find Better section as Edgework HQ. But first pick of the show locked in here, and we're four minutes into the show. Uh, so, money. Any thoughts on this Lightning Sabers game here tonight? I, I did see a photo. I think it was uh, you celebrating a uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, Stanley Cup not too long ago. Yeah, those are those are those those photos are outstanding. Uh, great, <laughs> great work there by our friend Berta Lucy. Um, I think that uh, Buffalo has gotten back to kind of playing. Yeah, there it is. Um, but Buffalo has gotten back to playing more wide open style of hockey again. Um, giving up a lot defensively. Tampa Bay, their game against Washington was. Um, was pretty interesting. Um, they looked pretty disinterested, besides a couple of um, couple of uh, events happening in that game. Other than that, I think that um, Tampa Bay is pretty much, um, as, as as Alex said, Tampa Bay is in cruise control. Buffalo is giving up a lot of chances. Um, nothing for me here. I think that um, the game over probably worth a look, but I um, 
at six at 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 a flat six, I can't get there. I would have liked the plus money six. Um, so for that, I will I will lay off the game. Uh, the over does does make sense if um, if uh, if both teams continue playing um, and show the interest that they're that they're currently showing at this point. Where do you like? Where do you need this number to get to for you to be kind of all in on this one and saying, yeah, this is the buy point. I will I will be playing this here. Yeah, if I, I mean, it's not gonna get there, but if I get, if I get a six plus one hundred five, I do it. Right. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. One bet in this game. The first period over minus one twenty two from Alex B. There. Now we'll lock that one in. Our first official play, and we do have another one here. So we'll head on over here now uh, to the Boston Washington game, where we're seeing the Capitals currently listed plus one forty. Hosting the Bruins, we see minus 150 on the other side. If a best price available, make sure you shop around. And we see five and a halves all the way across the board right now. So, money, you've got a bet for us in this one. Yeah, so you want to be careful with the with with, with the five and a halves. Only a certain team teams profiling a certain way warrant um, playing under on a five and a half. Um, at this point, the way that both of these teams are playing, both of them do warrant playing under five and a half. Um, Boston, Boston for the most part is trying to tighten up defensively. We're 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 seeing that come through. It's not. It it does reflect in um in their in in their goals or sorry in their um scoring output, um in 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 terms of the game totals. Um, Pittsburgh in their game, um it was a wide open game, but Pittsburgh kind of brings that out in you as well, right? Like if you've got a team that's uh, wanting to skate, giving up a bunch of chances. I mean, it's tough not to take advantage of that, right? So, uh, Washington is not that kind of team. Uh, Washington does does want to tighten it up. They do want to um, play with their with their with their defensive identity, um, and we are seeing that come through for them, right? Um, yes, last game against Tampa Bay was six. Before that, Buffalo was six. But both of these games, um, at least on the defensive front, were very low event games. And uh, and Washington, what we've seen from them through this run here, um, as they have gotten themselves back into the playoff race, is that they know that the only way that they're going to be successful is through strong defensive play. And um, this game obviously matters to both teams. Um, they're both profiling as an under five and a half. Um, so that's that is where I have it. Um, flat five and a half. So five and a half up to up to minus one ten. Um, I would, um, I would still play that. There you go. Second best bet of the day. We'll lock in under five and a half minus one Oh one we have available. Make sure to shop around there. Are minus one tens pretty much everywhere, but you can find some different prices out there. Minus one Oh four is at stacks right now as well. So, uh, lock that one in under five and a half minus one Oh one between the Bruins and the Capitals. Uh, Alex B, do you have any interest in this one? What are your thoughts on where this uh, number currently sits as well? Yeah, I kind of agree with so many in this spot. I think this would be a kind of a low and slow game. Both teams needing points, kind of, uh, you know, get their situations in a rise. But also, of course, trying to win that Atlantic Division title. Washington still in that log jam to try to grab uh, that second and final wild card spot. I looked at the draw here in, in this one. This one that I would play probably for a half unit. Uh, I definitely want to shop around now because you're seeing a lot of these prices that are actually below 300. So I wouldn't advise anyone playing this uh, anything less than plus 300. So definitely want to shop around and, and, and look for that. But I, I definitely lean with the draw. We've seen last uh, meeting go past regulation. We've seen last three meetings be very close, tight games. So uh, definitely we kind of lean in that direction with the under, but definitely like in the draw as well. All right, so half unit on the draw there, plus 323. Uh, that'll be our third best bet of the day that we'll lock in. And as of right now, that's kind of all we have for some of the best bets. But there are some other games that we have some interest in, myself included, uh, here tonight. Just kind of from a viewing perspective, I think it should be a decent night to sit down and watch some hockey. And one of those games that I'm going to be interested in here is the Pittsburgh-Nashville game tonight. Uh, right now we see minus 125 on the Penguins hosting the Predators. Nashville plus 113. We see some five and a halfs. There's some sixes out there, <laughs> six and a halfs as well. So it, depending on where you're at and what the prices are, these are ranging a little bit from book to book right now. Um, so money, what are your thoughts on this Penguins team, what they've done and how they're approaching the playoffs right now? Yeah, it's um tough. Man. So for like the... 
We we have such a nice ticket on the Penguins making the playoffs, and it looks like they're gonna um, break our hearts here. Uh, it looks like that for the second or third straight year they're gonna find a way to miss the playoffs. Um, we all remember what happened last year, um, the way that they lost to certain teams that are that we love around these parts um, for 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 them to miss the playoffs. So. Yeah, it looks like it's going to happen again. Um, for this game, I think it's priced fairly. Um, you have the premium thrown on the on the home team, and uh, Nashville for their part, um, they have kind of they are playing well. They are playing well, um, but um, the results aren't always there for them. Like in this last recent bit here, um, after their after after the win streak that they put together, so. Um, I think it might be a tough situation here for Pittsburgh. Um, obviously, I would have liked to bet Pittsburgh, um, but at this number, I will lay off. I think that um, we are we are fair where we are, so I will I I I will pass on that. And uh, Alex, I know that we didn't have any bets in this one going ahead, going into it, but uh, just from viewing perspective, just thoughts on this game and uh, kind of the implications that it has, what we might see out of this one. Yeah, well, I mean, like I said, obviously, massive spot for Pittsburgh, still trying to fight and grab one of the, the final wild card spots in the East. But with Nashville kind of, you know, pretty much set in stone with where they are, game may not mean as much to them. But like I said, Pittsburgh just seems to be running out of steam. And I'm curious to see who's going to be in goal because obviously they've been riding out to the Delkovic. Uh, he's been a huge reason why they're still in the conversation, still in this race as we head down to the final week of the season. But he looked like he might be out of gas as well. And you know, maybe you turn to Tristan Jari, the guy you, sit, you spent, you know, uh, and gave a five-year contract to, big money to, to step up in a, in a huge game tonight. Uh, so that'll be something that, that I'm definitely looking forward to looking see. There's a question in the chat here. I think it would be at least he's interesting to answer here. Uh, Charles saying, "What do you or when do you start prep for next season? Curious. What do you think of the Salt Lake Cheesecake's expectation for ne- uh, expectations for next year?" Um, I mean, so money, if you want to take that, like when, what, what point do you start kind of gearing up models and, and, uh, information and analytics for next season? I would imagine there's an off season for yourself as well. Yeah. So, um, after, after the, the, um, July 1st kind of free, free agent frenzy, like the first uh, few days there, um, I like to take that time off. Um, so I mean, obviously I monitor who's going where. And then, and then I just like to shut it down until, until August. Um, so sometime early August is when I, um, is when I start going at it again. And then, um, yeah, from 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 early August onwards, the Salt Lake Cheesecakes, um, Arizona was a team that I expected to be battling for the um, for 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 a wild card spot this year. And I mean, for like the most for a lot of the season, um, they. They they kind of lived up to their expectations. They did also live down to the expectations of a young team that um, wasn't ready to handle um, handle success yet, right? So um, I think their I think their future is bright. Um, I see no reason why if um, if I expected them to battle for the wild card, I would not expect that again um, as their as their pieces develop and as as they bring in a few of their of their um, of of the young kids as well. So um, yeah, I can see them battling for a wild card spot and really, really pushing it next year as well. Uh, Alex, I know that I, I saw some tweets from yours uh, over the past couple of days, as we've seen some of these announcements coming out that uh, the coyotes will be moving. What are your thoughts on the idea of relocation here? Yeah, well, it needed to be done. This is a long overdue thing. And it, it obviously is tough for the, the loyal fans who've been, uh, supporting the Coyotes in the state of Arizona for the last 25 years, but there just wasn't enough of you guys. It just wasn't enough. The the, the, the attendance uh, standings prove that. It's the attendance figures before moving to a 5,000-seat arena, something that Bettman had long eschewed with other teams where, oh, Quebec City couldn't get a club because they're building only a whole 13,000. Uh, but yet you were fine with keeping the Coyotes in Arizona despite playing in a 5,000-seat college hockey arena. It's been a mess for quite some time. Now they got a new owner. They got a new building. I do like the name Salt Lake Cheesecakes, kind of a, a reference to the old Cheesecake Factory that's there in Utah. It's probably the most exciting thing you'll find in Salt Lake City. But 
uh, it, it's something that needed to be done from, from a league perspective. And it'll be interesting to see. You know, we have a new fan base now, a you know, new arena. you got another team that's now in altitude. So there's a lot of things that you have to factor in with this team moving. And obviously you're going to have a lot of moving pieces as far as the roster goes too because this roster was going to turn over anyway with – uh, this club kind of in the midst of the end of a rebuild, is it kind of getting their pieces, their core pieces together to make a run. So in two or three years as a team, we could definitely talk about being a solid power, making the playoffs and maybe even possibly pushing for a title. But uh, obviously it's a rough transition and, and something to look at too, especially down the line, the last game that they do play in Arizona, I will definitely be looking at betting on the Coyotes in some form or fashion. Uh Final thing here for us today before we get out, um, Moretto came in here very early to make sure everyone was aware today is Lane Hudson Day for the Montreal fans. Uh, I'm not as familiar with uh, his game as maybe I would like to be at this point in time, but I don't know if uh, uh, So Money or Alex, if you guys have any thoughts on how he might translate as an NHL player here. I have no idea. All I care about is that I need Montreal to get the win tonight. So okay. if um, whatever that means for Lane and for Moreto and for whoever Patrick Wall, whoever's out there, like just they, they just <laughs> they, they just get me a win here. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> yeah, but he, I think I think Hudson's going to translate into a, a solid place. You know, a little bit undersized defenseman, but he's got some, you know some great skating ability. Uh, Illinois native. Well, he's actually born in Michigan, but then grew up in Illinois. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see, how, you know, like I said, how he, he translates the first few games of this year. And of course, we'll, you know, see him really get a, a full look next season. But it's been cool to see some of these college, uh, you know, stars of the future jumping the game. We saw Frank Nazer uh, make his debut for the Blackhawks yesterday. First shot on goal goes in, gets a, gets a goal, has a great celebration as well. So nice to see some of these younger guys coming in, getting a cup of coffee to wrap up the season. And of course, they'll take their uh, full spots going in the next one. All right, well, that'll do it for us here today. A shorter show, but that's all we have for bets, and we're not going to force anything at this point. Try to find uh, bets that we think have the best uh, or are best for us, best suited for us here. So giving out three on today's show. You can find these all over in the Bet Stamp app in the Find Better section as Edgework HQ. But our three best bets for today. First, we're going to the Sabres-Lightning game. We're going over one and a half. The first period, minus 122. So that's the first period over one and a half. Minus 122. We're also going to go with the, the Bruins Caps game. We're taking the regulation time draw straw season here to close it out. Close out this year. Low scoring affair at plus 323 for a half unit. And the final bet of the night in that same Boston Washington game. We're going under five and a half minus 101. Those are our best bets for today. If you did enjoy the show, if you enjoy the insight, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe here to the channel, turn on notifications. This week, uh, later this week, we're going to have Stanley Cup playoff series previews coming out here. We'll start recording those and turning them around, putting them out Thursday and Friday. Numerous different guests, everyone from the Edgework shows from Monday through Friday will be on different ones, talking about different series, giving out best bets, taking breaking down the prices and everything. So you're going to want to be subscribed here. Those will be popping out. Uh, on this channel in video form, pre-recorded, everything will come out there. So you don't uh, don't miss out on that. Make sure you're subscribed. But thanks to everyone who tuned in here today. Alex, so money. Thank you guys for taking the time to do this as always. See you guys throughout the rest of the week. For everyone watching, we'll see you guys back here tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. Enjoy the games tonight. Happy Lane Hudson Day, I guess, Moretto. I'll throw you bone there. And uh, good luck on your bets.